Hello, this is the sermon for Good Friday 2021, and it's taken from John's Gospel, John chapter 18, verses 1 through to chapter 19, verse 42. And I'll leave you to read that in, at your own leisure and quietly, uh, and make sure that you spend time reading through it and um, just thinking through the whole passage uh, in a in a to- in a space um, and in a time that you can take your time to read through it. So John chapter eighteen, right through to verse uh, chapter nineteen, verse forty two. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, for many, Good Friday is just another public holiday. A day to meet friends for a coffee. A day to go to the shops. A day, perhaps, to curl up with a good book or to watch a movie. A day much like any other. And really, was that any different on the day that Jesus was crucified? I mean, Jerusalem was a busy city. And in the city of Jerusalem, there were bargains to be made. There would have been people out shopping. There were tasks to be done because particularly it was just before the Sabbath. And they were preparing for the Passover. So there would have been nothing really strange or out of the ordinary. Apart from a ragtag group of people following a man with a cross, escorted by a Roman cohort. And there was little to draw or call attention to what was happening. Little to indicate that this day would change the world. Little to indicate that 2,000 years later, we along with Christians all around the world would be gathered in quiet sadness at the tragedy. At the injustice of that man dying on the cross. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, allowed himself to be arrested allowed himself to be beaten, mocked and scourged and crucified in a way that ought to sicken us to the core of our being with its violence. As we come to Good Friday each year, with the nearly unbearable weight of remembered pain, of guilt at our own failings, knowing that in our desperate human heart we long for salvation. These two chapters of John's Gospel leave us in no doubt about the terror and about the emptiness of the crucifixion. We are so much like the disciples of the story. We want our Messiah to make sense, to rise up over the powers and principalities and to rule. We yearn desperately for an end to our own human suffering the many tragedies that touch our lives and the lives of so many people. We want a God who is willing to wreak havoc on our enemies, to arm us with strength over those that hurt us. And at our best, we might might not want to want that too much, perhaps. But we at least want complete freedom in knowing that we can't be harmed any longer. And in our human way, will turn to comforting explanation, theologies and stories to try and make sense of our own messy lives. This is the Messiah we want, the God we think we need, but it is not the God we have. During the hours between Thursday night and Sunday morning, as we recall the tragedy of the cross, we come face to face with Christ and this is the God we have. A God who willingly, lovingly went to the cross for all humanity. This is the depth. There is a depth to this day, a profound power in its quiet solemnity. There is strong emotion. There is a sense of meaning and purpose that is difficult to capture in words. It is profound power found in the weakness of suffering. It is a contradiction, a scandal. And yet, the God we have wants us to share in this suffering, to bear the tragedy of others, to feel the weight of human sorrow that Jesus feels, to see the injustice being perpetrated against so many of our brothers and sisters around the world. 
We need to make ourselves aware of those befriended by Jesus during his lifetime. The strangers, the outcasts, the unclean, and not avert our faces. We cannot experience the sorrow of Good Friday without experiencing the sorrow of humanity also. When we finally meet the risen Lord, we will know him because of this day. We will know him because he suffered the worst of pain and shame we can imagine. We will know him because we sit with our own suffering and we sit with those who suffer. That is the good in Good Friday. Today we come to those... Today we come to the cross for those who cannot be here. We come to the cross for those who cannot begin to understand this day. For those whose own pain keeps them from being here. We come to the cross for those who do not know Jesus and those who openly scorn him. We come to the cross for those who have been exploited by others others, and for those who have been exploited. We come to the cross for those who cannot pray for those who no longer believe and for those who believe themselves abandoned by God. We come to the cross for ourselves knowing that without Jesus' death, we are nothing. The image of the suffering service servant brings us to this place. Christ's passion, his suffering and death should move us. Our hearts broken but not destroyed. It's not business as usual. We will leave here having heard once again the cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And on this holiest of days, we don't need words. We need to feel. To allow ourselves to feel. To feel his pain, for it was real. To feel his aloneness, to feel the terrible darkness that descended on the earth when the Son of God died on that cross. We live in the shadow of that cross. And I wonder what that means for you today. I wonder what it might mean for your relationships, for your priorities, the values you hold or claim to hold the ways you love and forgive, the ways you do things for others, the places where you invest your time, your money and your effort. What does the cross mean for you today? And tomorrow morning, light will break forth once again. But for this time together today, we honour the darkness. The word incarnate spoke love in words and in deeds, spoke love in handing himself over, in giving himself up, pouring himself out until there was nothing left, nothing more needed, just one last breath, just one final sentence. And in that one final sentence, God's love speaks across time, space and across all boundaries. It is finished. Amen.